Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. My wife is less fond of arty cinema and obscure horror than I am. So because she was away last night, I took the opportunity to watch the copy of Byzantium I got for Yule. It's quite a pleasant little vampire film starring Gemma Arterton as a vampire who's returned to prostitution because it's one of the few life skills she has and because she's very good at it. And Saoirse Ronan as her daughter who is struggling to fit into society. And much like The Hunger, it's very much focused on how dislocating it is to be a human predator if you've got these drives rather than a more intellectual or emotional choice in what you're doing that you can't really seek therapy for being a vampire so they're trapped as being almost serial killers and <clears throat> there is gore in it but the gore is subsidiary to the plot and is often there in place of other triggering circumstances that affect human beings so it paints a very interesting picture of just how much temptation humanity places in the way of vampires. If someone falls off a bicycle and injures themselves, there's blood. People treat women, particularly prostitutes, terribly poorly. So if you have this ability to be stronger, faster, more resilient, and have lived for long enough that you're no longer actually part of society, you're not even actually really linked to your human emotions or drives anymore, how hard it is to not just snap, how hard it is if someone puts you in a situation where they're offering to let you feed, to step back, to not inflict yourself on them even if they not fully potentially understanding what it means seem willing so whilst it is a great film to watch and i'd recommend it definitely to everyone who loves the hunger it also is an interesting film from the perspective of issues of consent what is informed consent and free will what is free will if you are actually a predator do you owe your prey any responsibility beyond keeping your food supply healthy and large if you used to be your prey, does that change the fact that you are now a predator? Obviously, psychologically, you'll be left with the feeling that you're still a human being. But if you are no longer human, if you're a vampire, should you leave that humanity behind? Should you embrace that humanity and try to treat the vampirism as some sort of psychological condition that should be overcome, restrained, treated as the other? Or should you use the power that you've been granted, seek out those who deserve the justice that human society can't due to the ability to detect being flawed, or compassion or whatever inflict to end those situations where the strong are oppressing the weak by being stronger 
whilst drawing on your understanding of weakness. So it's also quite a deep film. And unfortunately, like many deep films, the ending is not necessarily as comprehensive as for some films. There are threads left where, whether it's due to editing or the choice of the strip writer, there are plot threads that seem to unfortunately tail off to be squared away with a, well, that's all going to be okay. So let's get on with the next hundreds of years of being a vampire. And so uh, that was my evening and my hopefully coherent ramblings on why, if you like vampire films, particularly vampire films in the style of The Hunger, it would be worth your time checking out a copy of Byzantium. So, toodaloo!